folks. This is a gain E534 slash I423, 523E434, Big Data Applications and Analytics, the overview section. And here is a short lesson on computing trends, following after the short lesson on big data trends. Computing is what we use to process the big data. Okay, so this is a very old slide from around 2008. It shows how the clock speed of the computer chips is leveling off, and that's just mainly due to power issues. You can't afford to drive the higher clock speed with increased power. And so as the size of the feature size was continuing to decrease, and if you have right, right, match, you have a fixed size chip, you just put lots of CPUs in that chip. And that's called multi-core, where the processing power goes like the area of the chip. You could say it used to go like the volume of the chip, and now it goes like the area, but the, you've lost the term which, which was due to the chip running faster because distances were smaller. And you just kept the fact that the, you got more transistors, and that gave you an area effect. And of course, now you're up to even mainline, high-end Intel Intel chips can have 28 or the equivalent around that cores per chip, and other architects can have more cores per chip. And um, so, as we can't get performance with sequential thing, the only way we can get increased performance is to use multiple cores to run on the same job at the same time. That's because transistor count is increasing. It's just the speed of the transistors is not increasing. Now here are some general um, plots coming again from this uh, 2018 internet trends. And I say that just as I told you, the pretty pictures of data deluging disappeared around 2014 or so. The Pretty pictures of technology trends disappeared. Well, probably only a few were left in 2018. So it's harder and harder to get this type of picture. This one is calculations per second against time. And uh, this is really goes back to the beginning of time and emphasizes that part. Uh, here we have, the, so this is compute power. Uh, this is uh, price per gigabyte and capacity. Capacity increases, price per gigabyte decreases. Here is a, this is actually, if you like, a more precise version of that previous graph for a head of computing power, which effectively tells you how much a gigaflop costs. So a gigaflop is um, 10 to the ninth operations per second, 13 point operations per second, that's what flop stands for. And uh, here's how much money. Uh, it um, it uh, costs, and so I actually have used all of these machines, stretches and the similar IBM machines from that time, craze. Actually, we had the Hypercube out at that time, which was competing parallel computer competing with a Cray. Those became Beowulfs, and we have therefore lowest cost per GPU. So lowest cost per gigaflops. <coughs> Here we have the PlayStation 4. People tried to use PlayStation 4s to do computing and failed. It's just too idiosyncratic an architecture. And now we have the latest Intel and AMD mach machines, chips. And this just comes from Wikipedia. And you can see how we've gone from $146 billion for a gigaflop down to three cents. So that's a pretty large factor. And here's another storage uh, plot telling you the uh, goes down. That's actually, this is a pretty strong decrease, 38% annually and up to 2013. See again, this comes from an internet trend, probably an earlier one, and these are nicer pictures than the other ones. But they no longer make them. Because they're so obvious now. All this stuff is now obvious. Uh, they're, connect, they're, they're looking at higher end issues. So that's why, unfortunately, we don't have 
you know, it would be good to be able to take these plots and update them every year. Is bandwidth? Bandwidth is not only 27% annually. Is in, um, the bandwidth is increasing, or the bandwidth cost is decreasing 27% annually. Um, so these are all these nice exponential plots. And uh, again, this one stopped, this came from Internet Trends. And it uh, stops in 2013. So this is probably our 2014 plot. Here's a very recent plot. It's actually the computing power demanded by deep learning as a function of time. And here we have this dramatic increase. It's gone up a factor of 10 to the 12th since the early 90s when actually I first started looking at deep learning. And where we never realized it would be so successful because we didn't anticipate big data and realizing it could do so many powerful things. And here we have um, the, the, uh, tr the sort of hardware performance uh, trend. And we can see, obviously, that uh, deep learning is going up maybe a um, factor of a million more than the hardware is over this time period. Remember, these are the here to here to here. This to here is six orders of magnitude. And that is roughly what what deep learning needs are growing compared to the hardware. Whether it's still not clear, it's the dominant use of computers, but it's certainly a big use of computers. Here is an interesting concept, which I was impressed by because it came from Microsoft, who don't normally talk about supercomputers. So at a at a uh, Faculty meeting in 2018, uh, the Donald Kosman, who was the uh, head of Microsoft Redmond's lab, he talked about the global AI supercomputer. I added the word modeling because everybody else does modeling with supercomputers. And he made very, so several very important remarks that this supercomputer is the intelligent edge joined to the intelligent cloud. The edge gathers the data. I told you there's probably four times as much data on the edge as in the middle. It makes inferences. That's your Alexa running on the smart speaker using just the resources on the edge to interpret your voice. And it takes actions based on that. That's your that's your car computer making a decision to change direction to avoid a collision because it can't send that, that back to the cloud. And there are lots of sensors involved, again, that Car has a lot of sensors. The computing power is limited. The latency, the time from beginning to end, can be very short because there's no communication time. And because everything is possibly local, it's maybe a little more secure. In cloud, as infinite computing, as aggregated data, aggregated everything, and it's a good place to train all the models because you can, you to train the model, you need to aggregate data. Although if it was Alexa was just learning your voice, it could possibly learn that. It could be transfer learned by taking a general model and then customize it for you. Yeah, the, uh, <coughs> I just these I did in fact today, um, which I saw that we was a, just a, maybe a week or two ago, Intel announced that they messed up the seven nanometer um, production. Remember, we go down from we go down in feature size. Seven nanometers is the feature size, and it gets harder and harder, and more and more expensive to go down. But Samsung and uh, and the Taiwanese uh, f f uh, fa f fabric places are, are making good progress, and Intel is not doing as well. And it affects uh, my, a lot of my friends work on for and for Argonne National Lab. And they're, they're anticipating a machine called Aurora, which is meant to do AI in climate modeling, medical research, and nuclear simulations. And it was meant to be the first computer in the world to reach exascale. But now they anticipate that uh, it will be delayed. And depending on how much the delay is, maybe China will develop exascale supercomputers quicker. Actually, I think AI is more important. We want to keep on increasing the power of computers, but exascale will not be a transformational effect. Um, 
in my opinion. It will be an important effect, but not transformational. And um, here they're speculating that this will lead to a panic in the government who will pour money into rescuing our semiconductor manufacturing industries. And it's a little surprising Intel messed up. You know, these are giant companies. You would think they could avoid messing up. Especially if Korea and Taiwan can succeed. Why can't the US succeed? That's pretty disappointing. I gather Intel's stock price plunged after this announcement. And um, yeah, here's these things, Samsung and TSMC. And IBM also has a seven nanometer production capability. And up to now, Intel had always dominated over IBM. So this just shows that life is not a straight line. There's some little jaggy, jaggly parts in it. Here's the last slide um, in this set. And uh, it's just saying that uh, whereas Intel's stock price went down recently, NVIDIA's continue to go up. And that's because the GPUs they built to do gaming have become very, have become the most effective computer for bit, making Bitcoins. That was his first success. And now doing possibly something more useful, namely doing deep learning. So when we do deep learning, we typically use a GPU. And the latest GPU is also here at the IU supercomputer, uh, which is the Ampere. And uh, this plot over here points out that um, for the first time, uh, this number is, uh, what is this? The data center revenue is a very significant number. I thought actually it was, uh, well, it's bigger than gaming. It's not bigger than everything else NVIDIA does. But so here's data center 1.7. See, not how much has gone up. In between, uh, in a quarter, it's gone up from 1.1 to 1.7 just in three months. Whereas, of course, the other parts, the gaming, etc., and professional services, they they have still gone up because people are sitting at home gaming, uh, but it's only um, less than 10 percent. Whereas this is whatever it is, 60 percent. So. Again, there's some remarks we might even come back to later on about the, uh, the you know, in a single quarter, there's $35 billion spent on cloud services, which has actually gone up 10% just in that quarter. And this is benefiting, of course, uh, AWS, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, plus Alibaba and IBM and other cloud vendors. But those clouds have now GPUs. The concept of a high performance cloud server is very important because people are using clouds to train um, train deep learning. Because to train deep learning, you have to gather all the data together. And then you run all that data through a network. And um, the only natural place to gather data together is the cloud. You don't want to gather it together on the edge. You take it on the edge and accumulate it in the um, in the cloud. So it's sort of interesting how, so, I mean, I did not anticipate NVIDIA being this successful because their GPU is not obviously, I mean, it's surprising that NVIDIA has been able to make the GPU quite so successful. Like Intel has a TPU, which is meant to be a slightly more optimal approach, but NVIDIA has got so many resources, they made their GPUs just as good as a TPU. Um, and uh, because they built around, they've, they've have, they, they they were number one for several years. Even when better approaches possibly come along, they're not able to catch up because Nvidia has got such a big investment. Anyway, the data center revenues grew 167 percent. So that's year over year. So that's this. To this 655 to 1752. But even over a quarter, as I said, this looks like 60%. So that just shows that um, as these, again, that life is not a straight line, there are some important uh, um, ups and downs which either reflect problem, mistakes like Intel's, that's just a mistake, 
or an unexpected problem due to physics. It's possibly a mistake because uh, TSMC and Samsung don't have, or IBM don't have this problem. So they underestimated something. All right, so that's the world which we're living around. And these intelligent cloud is full of GPUs, full of deep learning, and it's driving the intelligent edge, which is full of little GPUs or equivalent, and inferenced. With deep learning, you train it, which derives the network. Then you take the network, take a new item like a new um, speech stream, you pass it through the network, and, it, and the speech stream is understood by the network and converted into text or, or, or whatever, or change this language or whatever we're doing with it. So that's the end of this thing, and we're at the end of this section D. And we go on to a rather different application-oriented discussion after this. We're still in the overview, of course.